Hello everyone and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. My name is Sarah and today I have a simple recipe for you. Um, I'm here in my kitchen looking out over a beautiful snowy landscape behind me um, with some borrowed houseplants uh, that we're houseplant sitting for some friends. And um, of course, it being winter, it's the perfect day to talk about cold cereal. <laughs> um, no, I like to have this dish cold, but uh, it also works very well hot. So this is similar to the overnight oatmeal uh, recipe that I posted a while back um, that's on the blog. But uh, I've adapted that and we've switched over to sort of a fortified cereal or fortified oatmeal, um, which is a little bit different. Now I'm calling it sort of a generic name. Um, the idea for this came about when we visited some friends in England and they really enjoy muesli, um, which is a brand name cereal. Um, it comes in different flavor combinations, but it's basically oats with um, nuts and fruits and spices and things added in. Now I agree that cereal is very good and it's pretty healthy um, depending on what your dietary needs are, but it has a lot of protein in it, um, it's fairly low sugar and that kind of a thing, and it has a lot of nutrition from the, the nuts and the dried fruit. Um, however, if you're buying one little box of it at a time, it can be quite expensive, you end up with a lot of packaging and so forth. And so um, our friends had the great idea to make um, this bulk fortified cereal um, themselves using bulk ingredients from their local cooperative market and then um, just storing them in some kind of big air, airtight container. They actually uh, eat quite a bit of it and so my friend makes like a five gallon bucket of it at a time. Um, we don't go through it quite that fast. We eat it about twice a week. So uh, this recipe is a bit scaled down and it makes about two liters of cereal, I think. Um, I'm not quite sure of the measurements, but you'll get an idea. I do put all the proportions in the recipe, which I will put in the show notes below. So you can get a feel for that. Um, for two adults eating it twice a week, this usually lasts us six to eight weeks, um, but you know your mileage may vary depending on portion size and so forth. So I'm not gonna talk about exact measurements. Again, that'll all be in the recipe, which you can get to, but I will kind of walk you through how I put this recipe together. Um, Cause there's a couple tips and tricks that um, will just make it last longer and make it easier to combine the ingredients. So you wanna start with a base of organic instant oats. Um, they might be called quick oats or something along those lines, but these are the ones that basically will hydrate even in cold water um, within about 20 minutes. Um, if you cook the cereal in a warm liquid, then it will obviously hydrate a lot faster. Um, but instead of soaking these overnight, what I do is I come downstairs, portion out um, the breakfast for the day, and then uh, put some liquid in the bowls, and then I go do a quick workout. And generally by the time I've done my workout and you know boiled water for my tea, the oatmeal is ready to eat. So, um, and that's without any heat. So just to give you an idea, it takes about 20 minutes, half an hour to fully hydrate, um, but no longer than that. So you don't have to wait, unlike the steel cut oats in my last recipe, you don't have to wait overnight, um, which is handy because if you forget to make breakfast, then you know you can, you can still have it pretty quickly. Um, so you're gonna start with those organic oats. And it, to me, it's very important to get organic oats because in this country, in the United States, um, all grains, that are not labeled organic are treated with glyphosate before they're harvested. So that goes for oats, wheat, corn, um, any other kind of grains that are grown here. And glyphosate is an herbicide. The uh, brand, it's sold under the brand name Roundup, so you might be familiar with it that way. Um, but it's a known carcinogen. There have been many studies that show that it causes cancer. Um, it also is an herbicide, so it destroys uh, flora, which means, you know, it attacks your gut bacteria and your good um, digestive helpers. Um, so I really try to stay away from any, as much as I can, um, stay away from any non-organic grains. So that's why I think that getting the organic oats, even if you can only get one um, item in this recipe as an organic item, I think the oats are the one to prioritize there. Obviously, get as much organic things as you can because I, you know, I think they're they're just healthier. Um, and then, besides the organic oats, 
you are going to need um, some nuts and seeds. And now these can be any combination of nuts and seeds that you like. Um, typically I use a combination of walnuts and pecans for my nuts. And then I like hemp hearts, which are a type of seed of the hemp plant. They have a lot of omega-3s um, and a lot of other uh, trace minerals in them. Uh, I buy them pre-hulled, of course, so that because uh, hemp seeds are very tiny, so you wouldn't want to have to try to remove move the holes yourself. Um, and then I also, in this case, have some pumpkin seeds. Um, but again, you could use sunflower seeds or you know whatever seeds you like. Um, if you're allergic to nuts, then you can go all seeds if if you need to do that. I also put in a couple of tablespoons of flaxseed powder. Um, flax seeds are hard to digest if you eat them whole. They basically just go through your system and you don't get any of the nutrition out of them. So you want to grind up your flax seeds or buy powderized flax seeds. And then uh, for dried fruit, you want to use any combination of dried fruits, again, that you like. I like to mix in two or three different kinds. Um, and I like to steer clear of fruit that has sugar added to it. So dried fruit already has a lot of sugar in it. Um, so generally I steer clear of things like sweetened cranberries because they have a lot of sugar added to them in favor of things like raisins or figs, dates, dried apricots. Um, you could get dried cherries or you know anything else. If you're using something like um, unsweetened cranberries or unsweetened dried cherries, something that's very tart, I would do at least half and half with something else that does have naturally higher sugar like raisins or dates. Um, because if you're using unsweetened yogurt in your final dish, then um, you know it might be a little bit too tangy for, especially for you know someone with kind of a, a sugary American palate like I have. Um, if you like really sour food and you, you don't like the taste of sugar or if you're just living a sugar-free lifestyle, uh, A, I'm jealous, but also um, that's great. You know, you can go for a, a, a naturally tartar fruit that has less sugar in it. And then um, when you put the final uh, recipe together to sit down to eat breakfast, you can use no sugar added uh, as well for that. Um, the last ingredient might sound a little bit weird, but uh, for this quantity of cereal, um, I add about a tablespoon of salt and it really helps bring out the flavors of all the other ingredients. You can taste the fruit, you can taste the uh, oils and the natural flavors of the nuts, and it really helps balance everything out and give it a nice rounded flavor. You can obviously use less salt or no salt if you're on a low sodium diet, um, but you know, a tablespoon of salt sounds like a lot and it certainly would be way too much for a single serving of this, but as we're making I don't know, 32 servings or something like that. It's really a couple pinches of salt per serving is what it works out to. So uh, in terms of putting this dish together or th this bulk um, quantity together, what I like to do is combine it in a very large stainless steel bowl. So I uh, start by adding out the oats. I measure those out. And then I like to add the dried fruit next. Um, if it's large items like figs or dates, you want to chop those up so that all of the fruit is about the same size. So if you have uh, raisins in there, for example, you want all the other fruits to kind of be chopped up so they're all raisin size. And this just helps distribute all the fruit throughout the oats so that you get a nice mix when you portion it out. Um, and you also want to make sure that you, uh, with clean and very dry hands, because you don't want to introduce any moisture um, into this mixture for long-term storage, um, you want to break up any clumps of dried fruit. Dried fruit often is very sticky and it will clump together and you want to make sure that you break that up so again that when you portion it out you don't just get a big wad of uh, raisins or something like that stuck together. Break up all the fruit and sprinkle it over the oats and then toss it uh, really quickly. The powder in the oats will kind of coat each individual piece of fruit and prevent it from sticking together. So I do that first, and while I'm doing that, I'll lightly to toast the nuts. Um, you can burn nuts very easily when you're trying to toast them, but toasting does two things. It brings out the flavor of the nuts, and it also makes them a little bit more shelf stable so that the fats and the oils in the nuts don't go rancid. Um, it would take a while at a fairly warm temperature for the nuts to go rancid anyway, but I do like the flavor as well from toasting. So I tend to toast them uh, on a tray in my little toaster oven, 
And just a couple of minutes on 350 is really all you need. Um, the rule is that if you can smell the nuts cooking, it's already too late and you probably burn them a little bit. So you just wanna kind of warm them gently, lightly toast them, and then pull them out of the oven so that they don't burn. Uh, dump them out onto a cutting board and chop them up again. They sh each piece should be about raisin sized um, so that the all the nuts and the fruit distribute evenly throughout the cereal. And then you can mix those in along with the seeds, the flax seeds, the salt, and the other ingredients. And then I just store it in an airtight container. Um, I had a little bit of overflow from my big container that I used. And so this is what it looks like in the end. Ready to go. And then to serve this, I usually scoop out about a third of a cup into a bowl. I add just under a third of a cup of liquid. So it's almost one to one, but a little bit less liquid. Um, unless you like it soupier, you know, you can do that. Um, and I use milk. Uh, we have a nice organic local milk here. Um, but if you don't drink milk, you could just use warm water. You could use um, and any alternative milk that you like. Um, any kind of liquid that you uh, prefer. Um, let that sit again about 20 minutes or so and then top with anything you'd like. I like to add a little bit of yogurt and some fresh fruit as well, usually like a cut up half an apple, um, but you could add anything else that you enjoy, berries or you know other in-season fruits. Um, if you're using plain yogurt or a lot of sour fruit, you could drizzle on a little bit of honey or maple syrup to sweeten it up a little bit. And to keep this recipe interesting throughout the year and even seasonal, you can change out the fruits and the other add-ons that you put in. So you can change out the fruits, the nuts, the dried fruit, um, what kind of seeds you're using, any additional toppings you're putting on when you're uh, eating this as a breakfast. And that just keeps it, you know, a little bit more interesting and engaging. So that's my uh, enriched oatmeal recipe. Um, let me know if you try it or if you already uh, eat this kind of cereal in the morning. Um, it's become a firm favorite of mine and I like that it's not too sugary. Uh, I like that it has a lot of different textures and flavors going on and uh, that it's fairly easy to make in the morning. It just takes a minute or two and then some wait time and it's ready to go. So I hope you're all very well and enjoying uh, whatever season you happen to be watching this video in and I will see you again very soon.